It's time to check out some cars. Mist has been kind enough to unprivate his data, so I'm taking full advantage of that to cycle my way through plenty of his games. We've got one or two more we want to check out. One of them I noticed was against Kazva, Mongols versus Roos. And the thing that really caught my eye with this is not just that we haven't checked out Kazva in a little bit, it's that he's playing the Mongols on Lipany. And I feel like Kazva, so far from what I've seen, the way he utilizes this Civ on this map is really impressive. He's actually really good at tempo aggression, followed by TC booming. I think there's a lot to learn from this guy, at least based on the games I've seen. Even when he's up against civs like the French being manned by top eight players, he finds a way to actually be the aggressor and he finds a way to get his eco greed. Let's see what he can do here though, because missed up, I've got a feeling he's going to be throwing some curveballs. We are of course playing on Lippany and he has picked the Roos, which means there is always the potential for a ball play. And these balls are mid-map located. They aren't central, so they're not optimal to chase into the base but they are easily defendable. Especially this Northern one is where I'm going to be keeping my eyes out to see if Mr. tries to make a play up there. Keep in mind, we did just watch Mr. do a pro scout build. That was on high view. I'm not necessarily expecting it here because I think like the, Mel the Mongols versus Delhi plays a little bit different in the early interim. And if you try to just all in on scouts, there's a high likelihood that you're going to be met by some early spearmen with outpost spam. Well, so far, Mister is instantly. Actually, I love this. He instantly moves out onto Kazva's side. The reason he's doing this, like, I mean, step one, usually you do this as a Roost player because you just want to take away your opponent's deer before you go for your own, right? Like, because the you're building these initial scouts, but you're building more to clean up the safer resources afterwards. But the way he done this was actually really clean against the Mongol player. Mongol players typically like don't always go for that secondary scout because remember they have to move their TC so they're already missing villager production so then if they build a scout as well that now take 25 seconds even more villagers missed so the idea by Mist is pretty smart to actually instantly go out to his opponent's corners to try and min max the likelihood that you know the Mongol player won't have a second scout and even if he does have a second scout remember because he would have moved his TC at the beginning of the game it would take him longer to get the second scout out it's a pretty cool little detail to keep in mind when you're playing against Mongols and now he'll start to peel back. The other thing, he did draw attention north side, so now he's going to play east. Unfortunately for Mister in this game, Kazva got a really favorable spawn against the Rouge player. Both deer stacks up in the northern corner. Like they were trying to set up a, a meet point, right? Like long distant families coming uh, in for Christmas. Meanwhile, if he'd had the other spawn, there would have been more opportunities for Mister to strike and take extra deer. Because if you look at his side, they're split left and right. Now, of course, being the Roos, he will pick it up first because the Mongols just don't move fast enough with their scouting. For a start, like one of their scouts is definitely going to have to bring back early sheep. And then, as we already highlighted, your secondary scout, the one that isn't the Khan, is always coming out later. Looks like Mister at the end of this. Should end up with close to 300. It doesn't look like he's got many wolves coming back to base. I wonder if we missed a few here. No, it looks like they more or less got cleaned up. So pretty rapido cleanup of the wolves. So it does sometimes feel like Lipany just doesn't give that many wolves. And other times you just find a never-ending slew of them. But if I recall correctly, there is a it's coded requirement that there is X amount of wolves spawning uh, on Lipany. So wherever they were, they got found very quickly. And yes, you are correct. The Khan is also terrible at killing the deer. I think he takes three shots very cool correctly due to his two damage on a five health unit. Well, at the end of all this, with the sheep included, this should be just over 300 bounty for Mister. That's a, a fair number. That's respectable. That's acceptable. Um, usually, if someone can crack at least 300, I feel like they've got a decent bounty gain as the Roos. And also, that's more or less what you want for a lot of these builds. You always want wheelbarrow. You want to have enough for your tech up. And preferably, if you can get a little bit extra to have that room to go for a night, if you feel you need it in the build, like having that variability, that option is really big. And you can see Mister, he's only six gold short. He could club a sheep and get some passive gold and he'd be there. Tech up will complete. Mister, how many scouts did he went for again? Interesting. So last time we saw him, on high view, he went for scouts and he went for pro scouts play and then eventually escalated to about seven. I'm wondering if Mister's going to try for pro scouts build again. If he goes on the gold vein, there's a high likelihood. So far, he isn't. 
So it might be that we're not going to see a Pro Scouts play. The reason I wouldn't expect against the Mongols, whereas it was kind of a bit more like smart against the Delhi, is the Mongols are probably statistically more likely to have Spearman out super early. Um, and also the other thing to consider is the map spawn just isn't generous when it comes to Pro Scouts play. Because if you come around the back and try to pick up these carcasses, you can be very slow on your exit. And if your opponent notices at all, gets one or two Spearmen out, you're going to die. Before anyone says, like, you know, but Delhi can build Spears as well, I agree. The difference is, however, like, when you're on the defensive and you're close to base like this, a Mongol player is going to have Yam network. That Yam network always allows them to quickly close the Spears. Not to mention the fact that they will typically build Spears in Dark Age, whereas most Delhi players, like, they're not going to start building Spears until Feudal. For the moment, no decision has been made on the Pro Scouts. A lot of gold has been gathered, actually. So it looks like it's going to be a fast castle in a different form this time. Khan does go down. A little bit of a whoopsie-daisy there coming out from Kazva. I'm not quite sure what the Khan was actually doing there. Buddy? You're, you're... I mean, at least he released the Falcon. That's what's important here. Because, you know, you know those kind of people, like, you, you get those stories like the person died in their house. Yeah, but they left the dog in the cage. That's the worst part. At least Kazva wasn't a meanie to his pet. Speaking of Kazva, he did go for that stables play, but that was revealed straight away, so Mister knows what's coming. And Mister is once again doing the Castle Age rush. And he's hooked on this stuff right now. Could this be the future? <laughs> Could the past be the future? You know, I wondered if... Part of the Castle Age rush was just like gameplay variants coming out from Mister, but it seems like he's very comfortable with this build in different forms, but with the end goal always being the same, which is the old school Castle Age Roost Rush. And there it is. Abu Trinity being rushed up. In the meantime, Kazva was not expecting this. Doesn't look like it with the split. With the fact that he went to the stables as well, the fact that he didn't set up patches earlier on. He didn't prep himself for this, and that's problematic. You can already see what's happening for Kazva. He had to go onto berries. It's wacky to think that he could have for free played onto deer and gotten away with it. And the weird part is he was just in Mister's base and saw no military buildings. So he knew he could go for this type of play. But instead, you know, he, the girl was already wheeled off in the gold, right? He already had to make that salt tool choice because of how far away the gold is. He didn't get any food up, uh, like um, food upside, shall we say. And it means I'm quite worried for the next five minutes of gameplay from the Mongol perspective. You've been forced to invest 300 wood in the pastures. You've been stuck on berries for a few minutes, partially. And your opponent just rushed up. Tech up it is now complete. Kazva is at least closing the distance. 800 food. Almost the required goal for Castle Age. And yes, to confirm for people, barcode is Mister. You guys just have to have a very special type of scanner that was only sold in supermarkets in 1984 to scan that barcode, and then uh, it will come up as Mister. The price of which uh, you cannot actually put on a single screen. There's just too many zeros involved. Because he is invaluable to the AU4 scene. I don't think that's even fanboying. I, I think like pe I think everyone would agree that they... If, if you had to choose a player that's liked by everyone... I'm trying to think like who else would be on that list. I hear loads, like, loads of people love Leenok. I think if you had to choose like three players that are liked by, by everyone, pretty much every player, someone on that list will have Mister. He's just such a lovable guy. He never feels like he's got anything bad to say about anything. He's very enjoyable to, to watch. Dude looks like he has so much love for the game. Like, there's just so much to love there. And I love the fact that he's just like, I've been away a while. I see all you idiots taking all your time in feudal. What are you doing? The Roos are a castle age sieve and you can't convince me otherwise. And the best part is like right now, like I, I mean... Mister is lovable, but also crafty. I wouldn't be surprised if now that the eyes are on these type of games, and he's like, you know, Marine Lord's in here watching these games, and Marine Lord's now like, huh, 
All Mr. does is rush his Castle Age. Next time they meet in competitive, prolonged feudal out of Mr. Baby. Choo choo. <laughs> that's what I love about it, though. Like, that's why it's so effective. That's why I always try to be um, a cheerer of Variant's gameplay, because I think there is proof that Variant's gameplay works. If you're talking about two mechanically skilled players, and one of them comes into it, and he takes a different approach to the meta, the standardized play, they'll succeed more often than they'll fail. Especially when you consider the way that AOE4 functions. Like, AOE4 is not as, as like, locked down. It's not as um, carved out in stone as other RTSs of the past. I think because of the natural focus on, like, counter-type units that AOE4 has to the point that you can get bonus damage, there's a lot more kind of flexibility to adapt your builds. That's the thing that, that I love, actually. Like, the, a lot of the things that AOE4 done, the way that it kind of was built, uh, was designed to encourage transitions. And that, that's impressive when you consider that in RTSs, transitions are the most uncomfortable and, and dangerous and most exposed and volatile part of RTS gameplay. Getting caught before you have your new unit uh, switch sorted can prove deadly. But AOE4 does it in such a way that it says, you know, it's okay, you should be doing this. You need to do this. Gives you kind of a way out instead of just being stuck in a rut. Casper okay, trying to make sure he's never stuck here. He's going to start setting up outposts as it looks like Mr. was trying to wall him in. North side done, south side now to be complete. That's going to create a central funnel point where both sides will have to fight. So far, Casper, he's going to those lances. If he can get the Yan network spread out, this is good. And you can see he's got one outpost up, but this one on the sacred site failing is going to be problematic for him. It means that his lances can't exactly trade efficiently because Mr. could just start a step back and pepper him down. For the time being, he's being a little bit hesitant to do due to how many lances are here. But realistically, Mr. got what he wanted out of it. He covered the pickup of the relic. That is going to now be four relics. And on the other side, you got to remember, Kazva did go into the prayer tent himself, so not happy with the fact that he only got one relic out of all of this. Good plays. Mr. really is catching people off guard. But this is going to be the importance of Variant's gameplay. Like, if this is the go-to strategy every time, yeah, people are, are, are going to adapt. And one big adaptation you might see coming out, definitely can't be done by Kazv in this game, but in other games against other civs, is if you're worried your opponent as the Roost is going to cast Lays Rush, one of the classic solutions was to wall in the Relics. Now, obviously, Kazva could not do that, which is unfortunate, but... If people are worried about a return of the, the Castle Age Rush for Roost, I definitely think that's one step you can take to alleviate that threat. You know, if you're not a filthy Mongol spammer. Speaking of the Mongols, around the back they go, but Mister is just so quick to react to this. Oh. Fame into a fight, scouts the front line, and that means the Lance is just going to die for a bad trade here. Eesh. Nice peel back as well. Notice that he's optimizing, like he's tanking the shots and then walking back. This is actually a really good micro out of Mister. Not enough players do that in this situation. Like it's only a few lances. Sure, you can argue that, oh, you know, I'll only lose three or four horse archers. Yeah, but why even that? Just lose none. <laughs> Just do this. Best part is he doesn't even stop off to heal him because he knows he needs to go. Wants to get back on the aggression. Kazu, of course, has at least got this Sprone placement. A little proven nuisance. Keep in mind that so far, Mister hasn't built any melee units, so has no way of torching them down. Upside for Kaiser after everything that happened here, he still has a Khan over in this area, so he does have some vision on the backside, and he does know about this secondary TC play coming out. One that he has mirrored himself, which is why on the eco side, you see Kaz is only five villages behind where he'll stay. <laughs> this outpost going up from Kaz was too late. More walls from uh, from Mister in the meantime. Oh man. That's actually going to be so annoying to deal with. Unless... Oh, the timing. Okay, he doesn't see the villager, though. He only sees the walls. But I don't think that was in any way intentional out of Mister. And it won't work anyway. Most of the wall up. But Kazwa realizes something's awry there. We'll turn around and deal with that threat before it becomes a problem. Third TC now out of Mister, though. And you can see what he's trying to do. He's prioritizing the sacred sites on the flanks for free gold trickle. He's been trying to 
slowly crawl his way around here. Also, by doing this, notice how much gold he's now secured. Four stacks. And the best part about it is right now, Mr. doesn't need gold. So what he's doing is he's setting himself up for Imperial Age and beyond. If he has to start going hard knights, hard streltsy, he's well insulated due to the amount of gold he'll have access to. And it looks like he will be going for those knights sooner than Imperial Age. Double stable drop. Boys are going to start being pumped out because he realizes he needs some solution to these outposts. And Warrior Monks can help a little bit. Probably should be the be-all end-all. That being said, 190 health, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> these guys look like psychos. When the guys think you're a witch and want to burn you. Outposts go down. Sick of sight to be decapped. Hasva, what is next? So, he got Siege Engineering improved. He hasn't used it at all so far. He is going Military Academy, which I'm a really big fan of. I love how more players have been optimizing for Military Academy in Castle Age quickly. I feel like if you if you look back at previous metas, like, you know, two, one month, two months ago, I think one month is far enough, maybe even two or three weeks. Not that many people were going Military Academy early on. In fact, I felt like a lot of people were waiting until almost Imperial Age to get it. This time, you're starting to see a switch up. Like these, these days, you're seeing a lot more players getting it by, I'd say, 14 to 18 minutes in to the game when they're in Castle Age. It's just so damn useful. I mean, you see the impact it's going to have. These horse archers are being pumped out at 22 seconds. If you got the 25% uh, discount on build speed, you'd basically be at the speed of archers coming out. In fact, if you look on the other side, you can see the difference that this can have in... Wait. Oh, he didn't get to complete it. Wait, what, 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 what? Carts! You forgot the cargo! What, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, come on guys. If there's, no, if there's no, if there's no goodies on the carts and they move this slow, clearly someone's just being lazy. Where, did when you run away, like when you try to run away from the boogeyman, but you realize you forgot your kid. When you run away from the chainsaw-wielding psycho, but you realize you left your dog back at the house. <laughs> I love these graphical glitches, man. They're so clowny. So, problem with that is Kazuha never got Military Academy. And remember that with the, with the Mongols, it's not like the Delhi. It doesn't just pause the progress and then continue again. He's still a minute away. That is also problematic when you consider like his military account is so small. It's 22 to 48. Missing out on military academy so far. So he missed out on it for an extra two, probably three minutes at least at this rate if he clicks it now. And he still isn't even clicking it. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Mister very comfortably has access to every part of the map that he needs to win the game now. Not only is he taking away all three sacred sites, because remember there's two outposts here, but he can get in there easy peasy any moment. The other thing to keep in mind is that all the gold. There is really not much gold for Kazra in this game. And if you start escalating late game, you have to start looking at siege, crossbows, more lances. All these things require gold. The only upside for him so far is Kazra has at least maintained decent vision on the flank. But these walls are going to prevent him raiding in that area. And, well, looks like those outposts we just talked about that are holding for the moment are not going to be holding for much longer. I'm wondering what the counter now is for Kazva. You can see he's trying to like prep Siege. I think this is the right call. He just needs to get cheap units into Siege. Because he's playing against mass horse archers. The answer is actually Maganels. Um, the only tough part is that his gold isn't accessible. Right? He's gotten this Norman gold vein, but that's it. The other two is going to have to fight over. So he has to make sure these first few fights work out well for him. For the outposts have been taken out, so Sacred Sight's going to be decapped. Wouldn't be surprised if Mister just goes for Imp now. For the moment, he's going to Maganels to counter out the crossbow ball. But he could easily just try and s float for Imp if he wants to. I think what we'll see out of Mister is he'll likely just try to pop cap first. Because right now, he has mid-map aggression. He knows he's getting more out of the map than Kazva. There's no need to be greedy and rush this, like, double up, right? Where I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, like, I have map, but now I want tech as well. He wants to try and make sure he's balancing his potential to be aggressive. Ok, 
credit to him. Still has that military lead. It's starting to look more and more like it's going to be an imp up. And I would just expect the standard play here, right? I'm not expecting to see a Spaskar Tower in this game. The discounts on Siege is just going to add up so well as this game goes on. So the sky doesn't really feel needed because with this static comp that Kaz was playing where he's gone for mass infantry, he actually can't afford to go on the flanks to burn down these palisades. So you shouldn't really be worried about that. You shouldn't worry about a need to replace it with stone walls. Maganel's now in play on both sides. Horse Archers spread out a little bit to make sure maximum impact can't come from them though. And that front line has already gone for Kaz, but he's about to lose the army fast here. Mister pushing in even deeper. Maganel shots looking good. This is the difference. Think about the distance between these horse archers and the distance between these archers. A lot more cluster from Kazva, which is why this was such a clear wipe in favor of Mister. Mangos at least get a little bit more value before going down. One downside of playing mass horse archer like this, of course, is you're doing no damage to the mangos, but you have at least cleaned up the main army. You have bought time, and now the choice is up to Mister. He can either choose to double down on now. But you can look for a tech up. And it looks like we are getting a lot of knights being produced. I like this play. He now has the ability to dive into the base because Kazma just threw away the main army. And he also realizes his weakness is at the end of this fight, he didn't have the ability to clean up Siege the way he should have been able to. But by doubling down on knights, next time that's not going to be a problem. Speaking of problems, Kazma's about to have quite a few of those. Let's wrap in. Cannot be addressed. You can see quickly Kazma's trying to rebuild the army. Still has not got Military Academy either. He will be forced to migrate away. And while he's doing that, I mentioned there wasn't necessarily a need for Spaskai Tower, but Mr. Disagrees. He says, I don't listen to you. You're a stupid pigeon. What do you know? You don't even have an opposable thumb. He's going to be going for an unorthodox build here. Not often that we see this. But I got to say... There is value in this one. And the reason there's value is if he now converts to a Sacred Site victory. I said he doesn't necessarily need to put stone walls up because Kazva doesn't have mobility on his side. He doesn't have the ability to go on flanks. But this just ensures that not only does Kazva have to go down the center, he can't go for a flank to decap. He then also has to play directly into this Baskai Tower instead of avoiding it. Not tech up complete. It's where things can get a bit messy for Kazva. Messier than they've been, because remember, the Streltsy are now going to be being prepped. Pretty worrisome, actually. And also, keep in mind, because uh, because Mr. went for the Spaskai instead of the High Armory, sure, he can't get these discounts on Siege, but like realistically, he doesn't need them. Once the Streltsy come out, it's not about having mass Siege. In some ways, it is in that you could you know benefit from Spring Wolves, sure, but the reality is, like, you can get shot triggers and a few springles to address Maganels. As long as you address Mag Maganels, you're fine. And if you did go for High Armory, this is probably a matchup where it's not as desirable because although you get the discount, you don't get the value on Banded Arms because remember, they nerf Banded Arms so that springles from the Roost don't have the best range anymore. The Sif that does have the best range on springles now are the Mongols. The shot triggers, the improved shot triggers, putting them up at 13 tower range. So... You know, if, if that was your worry that late game, oh, that means Mr. can't trade Siege Army for Siege Army, he never was going to get to do favorable trades up against the Mongols. Not from a Spring on Spring perspective. And also, by going Streltsy and maybe not needing Mangoes yourself as a result, you know, if you think about the discount savings you get per Mango versus per Spring it's much more valuable when you need to get Manganels, Trebuchets, and Bombards. If you only need Spring the savings are actually more negligible as it is the cheaper Siege unit. Sacred Sight's finally been capped. Kazva has got a lot of time, but hasn't got a lot of options due to the layout of this base. But I say that. <laughs> Mister, sir, did you forget about this small little spot? It looks like you may have, and that means you've just let a few Mongols into your base. Kaz will insta dive deeper, as it looks like Mister tried to react with the spray with the Strauss but a few will not cut it. The wraparound's coming in towards that gold vein. Wooden Fortress reaction is quick out of mist up, but might not be quick enough. A few villagers might be going down to this. And you can see he's actually pulling the entire army, which is problematic because this might offer up an opportunity in the front for Kazva. However, Kaz is lacking in trebuchet count to make quick work of the Fortress of 
think it's speaking of things making quick work of. Missed up. Whoops. Didn't insta garrison here, so loses several villages. This army from Kazva has paid for itself. It's idled a lot of the military Mista, and it's also killed off several villages. And it continues to exist, so it has to be addressed still. So this is a really good play by Kaz. It buys him some time, and he definitely needed that time. Did not have the siege ready back at home. Had it not been for this dive-in, you'd see Mista just massing Strelzi up to about 20 to 30 by now on the front line, and he start pushing forward into the Mongol base. Looks like just this group of horse archers should eventually be able to clean it up. And I'm looking at the numbers for Kaz. I think he's trying to gradually make his way towards Imp. He is now pop capped, right? So his goal shouldn't be a quick siege for it, it should be a slow siege for him. You're too late to try and deal with the Streltsy count. You know that's always going to be a threat. Your best option now is to get Imperial. Instead, he's going to dive in against Streltsy that stand their ground. And remember that Spaskar Tau, with all the upgrades already, is going to pack quite the punch. Something that doesn't get talked about enough is the fact that there's 8,000 health as well. It does not die fast, especially the mid traction trebuchets. Attack speed arrow is going to come out from Kazva. Damage is adding up fast though. The Maganel plus the cannon emplacements making quick work of the range battalion from Kaz. Streltsy do take it to heavy hit, but I'm a little bit concerned Kazva's the one worse for wear from this. By going for this push in, he just sacrificed his tech up. And it means that Mister can now just rebuild. He has this advantage for a lot longer. Sure, the horsemen are still wrapping around the base and being a frustration, but they haven't really done much in idling eco. This small group of horse archers has kept them running constantly. Now the Strelzy start to move in. Ambitious to try and take out outposts like this. Plus side for him, as it looks like Kazva never actually upgraded any of these, so won't be punished for this greedy posturing with Strelzy. being agreed. If there's one thing that you have to be greedy with this composition is the Mongols, it's going to be wood. Wood is drying up very quickly for Kazva. That is initial wood line. Halfway through both of the secondaries. After that, you're going to spread yourself quite thin. Your only option is going to be east side. And I wouldn't mind seeing Mister actually just prop up a few wooden fortresses in this area and prep for that. I think instead he's just going to want to go down the center though. And these bloody cavalry units are still alive. A lot of them are dead, but Kazva still has four in the field. So you can see that Mister's had enough. He's finally pulled down the premium units. Knights and Streltsy to try and clean up the last of them. And he does see this perfectly. He knows exactly where he's at. Kazva, Kazva, Kazva. What are we doing with this delay? Being forced to rebuild military, fleshing out the pasture lines. He's looking to get Imperial. My worry is as soon as you get Imperial now, because you lost all these outposts, you lost the Ford army, I actually think the moment you tech Imperial is the moment that Mister begins to dive. And your base is going to fold very fast, especially now that the first bombards are coming out from the Rus. Oh god, the timing couldn't be worse actually. So Kazva, he's now going in for it. It's going to be the White Stupid build as is standardized. He's going to need about a minute, minute and a half to get his tech ups ready upon completion of this. Probably more because he doesn't have enough gold. He only just wheeled over to the new step readout. Why is this problematic? Well, the bombards are in position. These bombards delete buildings incredibly quickly. You're going to lose a lot of forward infrastructure. That's going to cripple your ability to rebuild your army you lose. And I think you are going to lose a lot of army in these fights. You can't even raid south side to try and draw attention. Good move out of Mister. Prep the keep early on. Remember, he still has sacred site control, and this timer has to be about five minutes in so far. Speaking of keeps, another one coming in right next to the base of Kazva. Bombard's finally in. TC is going to be going down. No reaction out of Kaz so far. Tech up is going to complete and let the clock start now. He needs to buy himself two minutes. Shot triggers a minute away. Veterancy is also, or rather elite status, a minute away. In the meantime, though, these bombards get to clean up anything they see. Push in, in the meantime with Streltsy as well. This count is high, up to 40 gunpowder infantry. Other side, 17 horsemen. It's the only real count you have here. No mangonels yet by Kazva. Kaz, now Popcap, lacks the ability to get them. 
In the meantime, Bombard's continue to crawl in on the primary TC. A lot of damage. Still not answered yet. Remember, Kazva is still waiting on the shot triggers. 15 seconds away. Biology also a minute and 20 out. And the third Bombard's arrived. Mister is getting good timing on this. Raid on the south side is going to draw the attention of the main army. That's also going to prevent the Supremes from wheeling in. Too risky unless they want to get double time to death. I say that. Double time has not been researched. Is that correct? No, it has. Just have to remember, it doesn't show when you click from the other side. In fact, I, th I think double time will just wipe out these Supremes if he goes in. Supreme trade outs. So you can see the misses willing to throw these away to start with. Strokes are going to back up. Winter Fortress has a lot of them being laid by Mister. Good maneuvering here. Gives him a strong point to hold from. Streltsy start to stand their ground. Horsemen making their way forward. Mister start stepping back. May actually be a little bit of a mistake here. You're never getting the static deployment. Instead, you're just sacrificing. You still have a melee front line to deal with. Looks like Kaz was going to get hesitant. Doesn't want to dive the keep. We'll back away. A lot of troops lost on both sides. But Mister insta pop capped again. Kaz with 20 out. The Bombards are still alive, so they can continue to get rid of the infrastructure, which will slow down Kazva's ability to rebuild lost troops. I think it's going to make him struggle with the wood. We mentioned it. He's almost done with those two secondary wood lines. Wooded Fortresses continuing to shrink the area of influence that Kazva contains or controls. I'm struggling to see what Kazva's waiting for now. He's going to try to mass horsemen, but yeah, I mean, dude, like, Mist understands. Like, he sees the horsemen, instantly reacts to the spearmen. And you don't have a great answer to this. You've got the archer ball, but the, the I think the archers have way too much to do. They need to deal with the Streltsy and the horsemen, and you're two minutes out from losing. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just allergic to sacred sites being controlled. As is Kazva, although he doesn't have an EpiPen, which means he's in trouble. There is no way you get this decap. This is looking pretty desperate right now. I mean, Kazva just threw away quite a lot of troops. He might get this decap. Oh, no. Okay, so Mr. He needs to delete the wall. He hasn't deleted the wall. The only way you can get on on time is if he garrisons and then ungarrisons. Formation shuffle, formation shuffle, formation shuffle. Oh, MVP villagers on the north side. Kazva, no! He was so close to buying time. But now he's out of time. He delays that timer, but he has no way of breaching on the front. In the meantime, all this distraction, all this attention on the south side meant he didn't notice the dive coming in. Eco line shut down, and Kazva is shut out of this game. Good maneuvering by Mister. Good pace to take control of Lipany and win it with a Sacred Sight victory.